Okay, hey everybody, this is Frank, your all-knowing gamer, coming at you today. We're going to be looking at one of my Tristana games, and specifically, we're going to be looking at the combination of Tristana and Blitzcrank. This is a, a combo that I've been running with uh, my buddy Adam for a long time now, and actually, I would go as far as to say that this combination has been the most successful combination that uh, we've come up with thus far and of course I definitely think that Blitzcrank once you start getting up really really high he kind of doesn't offer as much to the team as uh, some of the other supports so um, yeah so it, I'm gonna be actually contact support 48 right now and you've got uh, like OMG, it's Adam who's going to be on Blitzcrank right now. Now, I do want to point out that this is actually in the beginning stages of our testing out this combination, and I don't actually know whether or not this is going to be a victory for us, but um, I'm going to go ahead and say that we most likely won our lane because it's actually been a very rare occurrence that we've lost our lane with this combination. Now, losing the game is a different story, of course, because typically what we've come across is like a 50, or it's not a 50, like a 60 some odd percent win ratio because our team will somehow do very very poorly even though we um we typically do very very well so uh, one thing i want to point out as well is that a lot of this combination comes from or a lot of the success that we have from this combination comes a lot uh from uh the blitzcrank player and and myself but it uh, a lot of it does come from the blitz as opposed to just the range ad who's you know supposed to be this hyper carry so that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with my W. This is something that I've started to do a lot more frequently now. You can definitely do some harassment with your E, but the fact that you're going to push forward the lane is really not an attractive Maybe attribute to have possible. on an ability. So what we're going to do now is, um, and you can see here, he actually CV'd this area at 132, and actually he should have waited until 140. So we're going to go ahead and step up here, make sure that they don't do these golems, and if we can catch them walking by, we're at the very least going to have them burn a flash and just do a whole bunch of damage. Now on the enemy team, you do have Lee Sin in the jungle, so more likely than not, he's going to be starting red. Um, so, just taking a look at what's going on here, we do have an Orianna in mid lane who's going to be up against a Mordekaiser, which that's gonna, that lane's going to be, I think, fairly difficult for our Orianna. And we still don't know exactly where the uh, enemy players are, and it's going to be a Corky Janna, who they're actually going to do a very a huge amount of damage actually and uh, one thing that I do want to know is that I've switched off of going flash ignite and I've gone more so towards the um, heal ignite and that works wonders on uh, on bottom lane so it looks like uh, you can see a tornado is most likely going to hit this blitz crank he's going to try to dodge it but it's not going to happen he's going to jump forward though and with the hook he is going to get it followed up very closely by a uh, jump on top there and uh, I'm going to have to flash forward here. Unfortunately, though, Blitzcrank is going to go down very, very low here. He is running Summoner Heal, and he opted not to use that right there, which I definitely think was the best way to go about it. However, we're going to be in a pretty tough situation here. Lee Sin has uh, gone into that brush, and I think we should have been a little bit more wary about the fact that Lee Sin could have been around in that area. So we're going to go down very, very low here, and uh, Blitzcrank is unfortunately going to have to be in a more defensive position, which you really don't want to do. You want to have the ability to be aggressive as a Blitzcrank, really offset the enemy team and of course you see that there is a significant advantage building up for Corky as far as CS goes because I've just been shoved out of lane by the Lee Sin however that's okay because in the end things will balance themselves out and I am going to uh, we did at least set the jungle back a little bit um, so there we go I am excuse me um... I'm going to go ahead and just auto-attack this wave down a little bit here, and the reason I'm doing that is because he has uh, the push advantage right now, so he's pushing on me, and if he would just keep auto-attacking, then I would also auto-attack, but with my E, things are actually going to balance out because of the extra damage that's being split up right now. So auto-attack that one, auto-attack that one, you've got a whole weekend back wave, so um, yeah. And he did the right thing there by opting to go for that. And you can see here, this back wave is actually going to be 
really uh, in a bad position there. And then First Blood is going to go down against our Orianna there. And of course that's going to be the case because we very, very rarely have a team that's, that actually wins. So the situation here is that we have Corky in mid lane. And this is a spot where we should be being far more aggressive. And actually the fact that we didn't realize that Corky was in mid lane... Um, uh, basically offset us and we weren't able to go for that aggressive play because Blitzcrank you can see here now we know Corky's gone um, a little bit late and there's the hook the jump up is gonna happen and I'm gonna use my E the ignite's gonna come out and then there's gonna be definitely a kill there so with all that ticking down there's gonna be that uh, that kill for bottom lane um, and then that aggressive play you can see obviously made possible by the Blitzcrank. Um, he played that perfectly. He was super aggressive and typically that's not what Blitzcranks like to do. Um, most Blitzcranks anyways at lower level, they will for some reason just go... Um, yeah, you can see here he's being super aggressive right there as well. And there's the hook, the jump up, and the E is going to land there. And unfortunately, even with the E, I'm not going to be able to pick up that kill. However, the flash was used, and uh, actually Summer Heal was used from the Blitzcrank as well. So I would definitely say that's a better trade for us because we're going to be able to kill that Corky more uh, effectively in the uh, next little stages of this game here. And you can see here, Blitzcrank is coming around, and even with this 200 and some odd health, he's being super, super aggressive. I would even call, go as far as to call this hyper-aggressive. Um, the tornado's going to come out across, and depending on which direction it goes, yeah. You can see he backed up, because if the tornado would have went up, that would have meant that he was warded. So he stayed in this position here, and then moved himself up once he realized that the tornado didn't come, and that's definitely what was on his mind at that point in time. Up the top lane, of course, every lane is losing its except for ours. And even ours is actually, I'm at 25 CS and he's at 28. So um, I could be CSing better. I definitely think that it's my mechanics that are failing me rather than the actual laning against these guys because um, we're definitely um, outplaying them right now. And here we go. Blitzcrank's going to back up into a... Uh, backing up into this position here is actually more aggressive because what that creates is a situation where uh, Corky... Sorry, it's, let's say that Janna was pulled from here to here rather than from uh, here to here. Um, that's going to mean that Corky would would have had to have gone from here all the way over here, and he would have had to have Valkyried over there, where we could have turned things around on him, and he wouldn't have had Valkyrie or Flash to get away from that. So uh, definitely a great play there, um, and that's how you can get into an aggressive stance with Blitzcrank, because the farther you separate them, the better off you're going to be. And you can see there that actually a green ward was placed down. But we have a pink ward in this great position here where you can see around this edge here. And unless it goes into this brush, it's uh, it's going to be spotted by that pink ward. And then, of course, just coming back into lane, we're going to make sure that uh, I can pick up whatever I possibly can. Candy minion, always vitally important. And I still actually fail this all somehow. All these back creeps. And that's the difficulty of CSing on a tower, especially when you're Tristana and you've got that E. Like, it's so frustrating because your E will do just enough damage where you can't set them up for a uh, proper CS. You have to take in that into account. And I've really started to do that very well, but it's still something that you've kind of got to work on. Um, just like CSing in general, just knowing when to shoot versus when to shoot have something blow up on the creeps and then, you know, re-go, but um, my CS is actually looking pretty awful right now, and again, it is down to my mechanics. This is kind of an earlier stage in my really, really practicing getting all everything down with a Tristana, especially when I've got a proper support in there with me, and a support that works well with Tristana, because that's typically not going to be the case. You're just banking on heals and all that good stuff, and it's just kind of silly. So here we go, and you can see here, he's going to let her go away, waiting for that, and he's going to go after the... Uh, He's going to go after the Corky here, and I've got the flash forward, and with the Ignite, I'm going to be able to pick up that kill unless he gets shielded, which he doesn't, so the, uh, he is going to go down there with the E and the Ignite, and I flash forward there and ignited with an auto attack, so now we're up to two kills at this bottom lane, Blitzcrank hasn't died, he's got two assists, and here's going to be another kill, and actually, in fact, um, unfortunately, yeah, we do actually end up picking up that kill because my mana actually got just went down just below the threshold for where I could have ulted, and then it came up at the pro uh, perfect time. And actually, I would say that's definitely the perfect time, because um, if I would have ulted sooner, I may not have gotten that kill. So definitely a good idea, that I, or a good thing that my mana got down so low. It basically forced me to secure that kill. And you can see here, my mechanics really falling off, guys. And uh, I'm just trying to CS as best as I can. I should have used that last one to CS that, that uh, one there. 
you can see here Cork is going to come in here and actually do a pretty good job of CSing down this wave. Uh, he probably should have used his E, but alas, he did not. So he's going to miss quite a few of those creeps. And I'm going to go back and pick up my pickaxe. In case you guys are wondering about build or, or like master runes and masteries, my page on Tristana is actually a my mastery page is a 921 page, so 21 in defense. And my runes are actually MR per level. Um, armor pen, flat damage, and and armor. So it's a very, very defensive play uh, build that I use with Triss because I know that I, if I'm going to go for, excuse me, an engagement, I'm going to be in their face with my W, trying to get, like just be right beside them and securing a kill once they start to run away, basically. So. Um, and I know that 21 in defense is actually a lot better in the early stages of the game than 21 in offense. So it basically just allows me to win my laning phase very, very early. And then in the late game with any range AD, you're going to be banking on items anyways. And here we go. You've got Blitzcrank in the background here. Trying not to reveal himself. And a great clairvoyance there is going to reveal the Lee Sin and he's going to force him to run away. So that worked out very, very well for us. And one thing that I've stopped doing, basically, is jumping in on my own, especially when I've got Blitzcrank here. And you can see here he's staying in the background, but now he's, he is going to reveal himself and move up to this forward brush position, which is actually going to be great for him because he's going to zone them out. Um, and that's one, definitely one thing you can do. And then the blue steel is going to go down here, so that worked out very, very well for us. Okay, so we're going to push in here, and uh, it looks like the pink ward has gone down. That's another great thing as well that uh, Adam does very, very well, is he gets those pink wards. And uh, I criticize him more often than I compliment him, but he actually does... That's actually one of the things that I think he does the best out of any support I've seen. He pink wards so fucking well. Um, I Excuse my French, but he pink wards like a god. And you can see here... I'm starting to try to CS better, but I'm still failing very, very hard. And you can see here, he is going to use his W to get in there. There's the ward, and it looks like it's actually just out of the brush there. So um, that's kind of silly that they placed a ward outside of that brush. But he's okay to stand there now, and he knows that. So he's going to go ahead and stay in this brush. He might be a little bit wary that it landed in the bush and that the pink ward is just too far back that he can't see it, but I'm pretty positive that he knows that that's out of the brush. And you can see here, I'm just doing some poking because I have a vamp scepter and he does not. And you can see here, this is another great thing about Blitzcrank, is you can be right underneath that turret. Here's the jump, the ignite, and the ultimate, and that's just way, way too much damage. It's a lot of mana, and that's why you can see that I've been saving up my mana, not really expending it whatsoever. Because this combination, they stayed CC'd for so long that um, and Tristana with her burst is just such a great combination. That's why Tristana, if you guys are thinking about playing Tristana, and here you go again, a great hook is about to come up. There's the hook, jump forward, E, and I'm going to make sure that the healing is reduced there. So even from the, uh, and there's the flash forward actually, which she didn't need to do, but she did. So um, there we go. So the flash forward ten, uh, worked out for her there, and I'm going to leave this tower up to make sure that it kills as many as my, of my creeps as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and push this forward here, and I'm going to opt to go back right after this, which I should have if I CS this properly and take out that turret. I'm going to have enough to go ahead and pick up a BF sword. So um, there it is. Down this one goes. And these creeps will, two, two more will die to leave in the tower up where I could have just pushed forward there and gotten greedy and tried to uh, pick that off. But here we go. I'm going to do some damage here to the Lee Sin. And this is a bad position for him as well where he's going to go down. You can see the ward was revealed there. This is a little bit tricksy though. I think uh, we got a little bit too aggressive. But uh, either way, with, Cor with just Corky there and not the Janna, that worked out very, very well for us. In mid lane, you've of course got my team who is going to be uh, getting killed here because that's just the way we do things. But it looks like actually a nice turnaround there, so doing a great job of not dying. Um, also, one thing that I, I actually do, and this is a great, great idea. If you are bottom laning with somebody that you win all of your lanes, like, I'm not even kidding you, we have lost one bottom lane. And the one bottom lane that we lost was because their jungler was camping us. And also, the jungler will camp you if you're losing this, um, or sorry, if you're winning like this one-sidedly. 
So you have to be prepared for that, and that's another reason why I like to take Adam with me, is because he wards so damn well, and uh, we really are not at much risk. Ooh, that was a little bit of a trippy thing there. I don't know if that's in the proper position. It looks like it is, but maybe here? That uh, looks better. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's the uh, situation there, and uh, he does a great job of warding, and we know that the jungler is going to come down there constantly, and a lot of times we actually get some of our kills off of the jungler and knowing that they're going to be there, so um, that's definitely one thing to note. But like I was going to mention to finish my thought, if you go for a Riggles build down at bottom lane, it's not going to be as effective. You're not going to be able to make it into the late game. But you're going to be able to do the deed of helping your team out in here. And it looks like we're actually going to not get the kill here. But it is going to be our dragon. So that works out very, very well for us. And actually, Tornado almost picking that one up as uh, Oriana is now going to start pounding on this um, Janna, who is going to be forced to use her ultimate. So yeah, picking up a Riggles will basically allow you to pick up the dragon very, very early. But you need to take into consideration that you are going to take a lot of damage from that. And you need to start it basically at full health. So you basically need to plan out a spot where you can go in and... Ooh, it looks like uh, we've got some action going down here. Great hook, and I actually jumped forward there, um, not coordinating that well. And you can see I used my E because I knew that he was going to ult and try to heal up off of that. And the, the E negated so much of that healing and uh, he was uh, able to be picked off there very very quickly so yeah if you go for a dragon yeah, with a riggles and a support and your support tanks it for you like they should if you have a riggles then uh, most likely if you go for it early enough after getting kills and like really good cs the bottom lane is going to be so weak that they they're not going to be able to ward that far and they're not going to ward that far and if they do uh, engage on you at dragon more likely than not you're going to be able to pick them off anyway so but you do have to take into consideration that you're going to have to go back do dragon and then go back right and then send the support back right afterwards so you got to have a support that's super dedicated like uh, adam is because adam actually plays the role so good um and actually there's action up at top lane but i'm really discussing this bottom lane right now so yeah adam plays the role so freaking good that he knows exactly what he needs to be doing all the time and there are situations where if we push up to here let's say we're starting to pound down on this turret and we're like right around this area not only will he ward properly so like ward um like here and here let's say but he'll also um Every time I'm pushing down this lane and like hitting this turret, he'll go over here every time this resets, damage those creeps down to a point where I can just go over there and one-shot them. So he is like super, super dedicated as a support and he really adds a lot of skill to the game, so... Or to the role, rather, whereas I think a lot of people think that there's not that much skill to it, but he definitely proves them otherwise. And a lot of thought processes, too, that he takes into consideration. Almost got trolled there by the minions. But yeah, so that's that's my call on that one. Is We have a really, really great synergy down at bottom lane. But anyways, uh, those are my thoughts there. And we're just going to go ahead and chunk this one along. And you can see here, I kid you not, guys. Like, if you, if you check my match history, actually, my match history will be filled with random stuff because I played a bunch of games with some buddies. But I'll check and see if at the bottom of my match history actually shows anything with Adam because uh, we roll it real, real hard. And there has not been, I kid you not, there has not been a single lane where I don't go at least 5-0 five, five and o in bottom lane. Like 5-0, and o, not just like 5 kills, like 5-0. and o. And yeah, I'm kind of going cheater mode because now I'm just able to CS really, really quickly with all my crazy damage. So it looks like blue buff is going to go down here to Oriana, which is always a good thing. And uh, she's going to let the golem reset if she does that any longer, so one more time. But yeah, and then one thing also is that Mordekaiser is actually one of my top uh, bands. So one thing about this game specifically, Mordekaiser is like one of my top bands, but when I'm Tristana, I really don't give a damn. You can see there, I juke the Q. So you always want to be on top of your, on top of the ball because when you are a range AD and you're, and you're hyper carrying as a range AD, you want to take everything and like you want to steal everything, get all the gold and take no damage. So. Um, you can see there that I stole that blue Wraith. I have no idea what the skill level is of this Oriana. And based on the fact that I'm doing better than her, I'm going to assume that I'm a better player and that I deserve the gold more. My CS is really bad. 
I need to throw that out there as well. I could actually have another, like, 70 CS right now if I really worked on it. Well, realistically, I could have another 50. So it looks like we are going to get into a little bit of a pickle here, but you can see there Blitzcrank does a ton of burst. Great ultimate there from the Orianna, and then a uh, return great ultimate there from the... Uh, from the Janna, but she is going to end up picking up that kill on Lee Sin anyways because he just kind of derped that one hard. But here we go. We're going to chase this one down, and of course, with Blitzcrank at my side, you know he's going to get that pull, and uh, off this guy goes with the Valkyrie, and I'm going to jump forward here. A little bit over-aggressive, but I am going to pick up that kill and uh, be able to jump forward yet again, and with the Ignite, he is going to get picked off there, so that worked out very, very well for us. And... Uh, yeah, you can see there that uh, just having Blitzcrank alongside, if they're if they're running, you know you're going to pick them off. And with Tristana, you can basically offset. So there's a distance of, like, let's say here, I'll give you this. There's a distance from here, actually. So that distance there is basically, um, that's cool, the cannonball's like flickering. Um, that's the distance that you can cover. Blitzcrank can pull about that far as well. So if he pulls, you can basically jump to that distance. So anywhere within here... If your Blitzcrank is anywhere within that radius, he's going to be, uh, you're basically going to be good to go on picking up a kill because you can just jump right on top of them. And if you level your W with a Blitzcrank or an Alistar, which you should be doing because that gives you the most damage, um, that's going to work out very well for you as well. So, um, yeah, having a support with you that can, that can work that out. And here we go. I'm actually going to jump forward there and pick up that kill. Um, my Ignite isn't actually ready, I don't think, because I did just use it on the Corky. But I think the pause kind of messed it up. But yeah, so going Legendary at 19 minutes, always a good thing, and I'm going to have to be prepared sometime in the near future to go back. But yeah, um, one thing I mentioned before though, when I juked the Q, I could have very well taken that Q for the Orianna, but um, I let her take it because... Well, first of all, she could have juked it as well, but um, I let her take it because um, I wanted... Uh, you basically just have to assume that if you're not taking damage, that's the best thing for your team. Because you're going to be outputting the most damage, and you're going to be the most skillful player. If that's what you're interested in. Also, if you want to look at my uh, skill order here, and actually this is a great play here as well, um, by the Blitzcrank. He pulled the red buff over the wall, and now I'm going to be able to take this pretty quickly. He used his ultimate there, I'm not sure why, but now uh, Dragon's up as well. All that good stuff. But my skill order basically goes W, E, W, um, so it goes W, E, W, E, W, and then I'm, and then, uh, I go for R and Q. I'm, and then I max Q because basically the way you got to look at it is your burst from your skills, your magic damage is so freaking much in the early game. It is so freaking much. Once you start hitting late game, though, your auto attacks are going to be doing more, so you want to add attack speed and make sure that you're, you get as many auto attacks off as possible. And basically, I judge it on when I get my BF sword, that's when I'm going to get my Q. Um, that's when I'm going to start leveling my Q. Or a... Um, actually, it looks like a top lane here. It's going pretty interestingly. But, uh, wow, she goes down really, really low there, and Orianna's going to be here, of course, to possibly pick that one up. No. Here we go, he's just going to chase this one forward, great ball toss there, and actually Shivana there to pick up the pieces if they, if there were any left, which there were not. And I'm going to go down to bottom lane, of course, and form that one up, um, farm that one up. Unfortunately, with Tristana, um, actually, fortunately un and unfortunately, with Tristana, you can't freeze a lane because of your E passive. So, um, you basically have to win your lane. Um, early on because if you don't or like get kills or something like that because if you don't win your lane and get kills or whatever you basically are gonna ha you're forced to leave lane because you're gonna push this like watch I'll give you the example I'm gonna push this wave down and I'm gonna have nothing to do I'm gonna be forced to team fight which you don't want to do as range AD until you hit a certain point in your build um, I'm definitely at that point already I'm significantly past that I think once you get a BF sword as well as your level 2 boots and like something else like a vamp or like a dorans and a vamp that sounds about the threshold where you want to start uh, engaging the rest of the enemy team basically that's um excuse me that's the point where you want to start engaging here we go let's try and hook of course he's gonna land that and not a big deal we're gonna pick up that kill 
Um, but yeah, so you want to win your lane very, very handily because if you don't, you're gonna have you're gonna be forced to leave your lane anyways, and you're not gonna have anything to do. You're not gonna be able to contribute. Here we go, Blitzcrank, of course, getting in there, and there's the pop-up, and he's going to back up a little bit. He's saving his pull, you can see here, because he didn't need to use it. So Blitzcrank's pull is still available right now, and it was just because he didn't need to use it. He was waiting for the Valkyrie, so basically he just wanted to negate the Valkyrie, because the Valkyrie is going to draw a straight line, and you know where the end point of that line is. So um, Adam right now kind of developed this thing, because there's so many ADs that have that getaway ability, the Tristana jump, the Graves E, Caitlyn's E, um, Valkyrie, Tumble, all those things are going to be things that you can dodge a Blitzcrank hook with. So him, to play at a very skilled level with his Blitzcrank, what he does is he, um, and actually we've got Lee Sin coming down right now as well, but what he does is he waits for those things, and sometimes he'll try to predict them, but more often than not he just waits them out and tries to draw that line. Actually, this Lee Sin is really, really weak, so my turning around here wouldn't be too bad of an idea, but stealing his golems is not going to be a bad idea either. And I know he's going to want to go up there, so I'm just going to leave him that one, so I can assume that the timer is going to be the same anyways, and that's something you got to keep track of as well. Woo! Guys, man, I'm on a roll. There's so much freaking information here, because I've played this combo so damn much, like me and Adam, and this is actually not that great. My CS is low compared to what we're doing now. And we're actually, we actually didn't kill as many times as we could have. Here we go, the ward's going to go down here, and Blitzcrank, of course, is going to be looking for that angle to pick up that kill, um, or that pull. And uh, he knows the ward is there, so he's going to make sure that he can, uh, yeah, he's going to go over there. Actually, he's got Oracle, so he's going to pick that one off. And actually, what he does as well, more often than not, is if he pink wards, he lets me pick up the gold. Because what's the point of uh, support saying, oh, well, I bought that extra little bit for that pink ward, so I should get the gold off of this ward, versus I bought a pink ward, so I get to take a CS from you. No, you want your range AD to be fat, period. The 25 extra gold isn't going to be that big of a deal. So give it to your support. And Adam is the first person I've actually seen actually do that in a dedicated fashion where he does it every single time. If he can. If he has to take it, then he will. So we're going to go in here, of course, and just CS this wave down. And being Tristana, it's going to take a grand total of, like, maybe six seconds. And I'm just going to go back. So, um, I'm probably going to finish my PD here, pick up a pickaxe, and uh, actually I'm going to be able to get a sword here too. But I should be getting a green potion, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i get the green potion. Actually, I could have gotten the sword and the green potion, but um, basically what I did there is I valued the green the time on the green the extra time on the end of the green potion over having the sword with me so um whether you agree with that or not meh. and there we go it looks like oriana is going to get picked up there so i actually have as many kills as the enemy team does so all right so things going very very well for us also i've got a tournament coming up uh, a local tournament, and I'm going to be, it's actually tomorrow, so I'm going to be broadcasting that. And you can see here, Adam, with a genius play, he, you can see he's still got the hook. He still has the hook, because he's also waiting for the flash. Okay, listen to me when I say this, and like, I, I don't compliment anyone when I play with them. I can tell, like, anybody who plays with me, they know I don't compliment them. I don't do it, okay? This guy is fucking one of the smartest fucking players I've ever seen, okay? He's just playing support, and he's just playing Blitzcrank, and yes, I think he could be better, but um, the shit that he does, I highly doubt that anyone between... Like, he's definitely playing his Blitzcrank at, like, a... I don't know. Probably, like, an 1800-level Blitzcrank would play. That's honestly where what I value his... Uh, his uh, support ability as. And you can see here, I'm just way ahead of Corky. I'm actually a full Phantom Dancer ahead of Corky on top of the finished Infinity Edge. He's got a Vamp Scepter. He's got two Doran's Blades, but uh, so he's probably got the Infinity Edge, but I'm basically a Phantom Dancer ahead of him.
And yeah, this is actually a good situation for us because, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and find this Lee Sin, but with all these characters here, I'm a little bit concerned. Oracles is on Blitzcrank though, which I don't take into consideration at this point. Otherwise, I would have just full-blown engaged because of the Akali. And right here, you want to stand in that bush just for that extra little second to see, to make sure if he's still coming down or if he's going mid. That way you can tell them. Like, if, if that were... If, if I w wouldn't have seen him there, and, or sorry, didn't see him here, I would have pinged up this way to let them know that Mordekaiser was most likely coming up that way. <gasps> Excuse me. Yeah, and I'm going to be doing so much damage here on top of the... Uh, Shivana with her wriggles that we're gonna be okay here and I'm actually she threw down this bubble and it was actually so far forward that I was able to zone her out of her own bubble before she can even get to it you can see there's a pink ward so we're unfortunately not gonna be able to pick up dragon but none, none, none of us really went down all that low and actually I just took a pretty big chunk with that uh, tornado but that's not gonna be too big of a concern one auto attack and I'm pretty well back to full health yeah, I'm looking for that blitz pull. And those are the situations where they're if they're in a clump and you want to separate one, that's when you want to pull. But if you're one-on-one, -on -one, just save it if you can. Wait for them to use their flash. Wait for them to use their Valkyrie. Just brilliant stuff. Ugh. And this is kind of like the lo like this is the longest um, situation around Baron that I've seen. And actually, he goes for the hook here and he misses, and then he clairvoyances. I remember this game, so he's gonna clairvoyance here. Yeah, and he should have clairvoyance first. I actually remember that specifically. And the cooldown on his pull is gonna be pretty long, so uh, he can't really constantly do that. And of course, every giant. Excuse me. Every giant CS wave is something you want to take. If you can. Um, this game I'm being more generous because we're winning all the way across the board. Um, so, I'm being more generous in letting Warwick actually go up there and CS that down. But, if you feel like you are don't belong in your ELO level, then you need to hyper carry. Period. That's it. And if you... And you need to take everything. So that was kind of silly. If I would have uh, ignited him or ulted him, I would have been able to get that kill. But alas, I did not. And then that, of course, would have opened up the door for a very, very easy Baron here. But we're going to go ahead and get it anyways. And I'm going to go ahead and speed this one forward. And another great thing about having Blitzcrank is if they're in a position like this, you can hook them out into the Baron area and we'll be able to be good to go there. So double kill there. Just make it 12 kills. And we're, of course, going to put this Baron as well because Lee Sin is no longer with us. Now, we do have two towers down at bottom lane, but we do want to push, push mid because our creep wave is close to... The closest creep wave to us is this mid lane, so we're going to go ahead and go for that. Oh, yeah, here we go. Attack that down. And then you want to take a look at the timer. This is definitely what I have up right now. I can tell you in game I probably press tab at roughly the same time. But... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and push this one down. Mordecai's is not here, so they're mid in their jungle. So two very strong characters. Very, very good. Flash being music. Okay, so there's my analysis on the gameplay that I've been playing a lot of lately. If you see a big... If you are if you have me on your friends list and you see a giant list of Tristana games, it's most likely because Adam was over. And the only time that I like to play the same character several times over is in a ranked game. And I've been ranking a lot. 